Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Okami HD episode 47. I'm your host, Ultra Director Jester. We've got... Oh boy, have we got a hell of a tough time ahead of us. This is like one of the three things I dreaded most about doing this playthrough. We're gonna need to talk to the merchant here because we need... <laughs> oh, we need a lot of things. I don't think I'm gonna get enough for what we gotta do, but we'll still be all right. Uh, let's get some uh, let's get some infinity stones here because today we're gonna be taking care of the Devil Gate Trials. The Devil Gate Trials. That's where you have to. We've done this before in like season two, I believe. It's where we have to go through ten different, I guess, encounters between monsters, and if we survive all ten of them we get a stray bead. The thing is, we have to do this twice. We've got one in North Ryushima and one in Kamui. There was one devil gate in Ryushima, just regular Ryushima, that we already taken care of. And uh, right now we're in North Ryushima, obviously. We need to make it to this island here. This one right here, that's where the second Devil Trial Gate is, and I think we may have already gone in there once before. Because I think there was like a spider- there's like a spider boss in there, it usually is before these trial gates. I think we may have already taken care of this. Anyway, it's down this hole, which you may have opened up earlier. Yes, we did, because we fought a giant spider down here before, but now it's actually time to do the trials themselves. So here we go! Round 1 of 10. You need to kill 5 Bell Guardians and 12 Headless Guardians. This is a pretty good intro to the second Devil Gate. It takes the upscaled versions of the weaker imp enemies and throws them your way. Shouldn't be too hard, really. This is also the best time to be getting Demon Fangs by using the Piss move we got earlier, just press circle, and by doing a Floral Finisher, which is using a certain brushstroke as the final blow. For example, the Bell Guardian gets the Slash, and the Headless Guardian gets the Cherry. Be sure to use Veil of Mist to keep your time down and the enemies slow to maximize your cash bonus at the end. That's what the Infinity Stones were for. Well, alright, that's just the first round. Let's go on to the next round. Round two has four Earth Noses and four Thunder Ears. And I hate these elemental enemies. They make it so that you can't attack them unless you use the right brushstroke or unless they kind of feel like it. Earth Nose gets the Veil of Mist, which shouldn't be a problem, and Thunder Ear gets a slash for bonus fangs. Alright, next! Round 3 tackles 9 Headless Guardians and 3 Ubumes, which are some of the most annoying enemies in the entire game. You need to attack them in a specific way before they can even take damage, and that includes waiting until they land to even initiate that attack! Ugh! I recommend taking out the Headless Guardians first, since they serve only to distract you from the Ubumes, which require most of your attention. Move quickly, use the Veil of Mist, and the battle should go over without much difficulty. Guardians get the bombs, Ubumi gets the Veil of Mist. I hate these guys! Round four is pitifully easy. You have a Jiro and a Saburo, who usually combine to make a much tougher shark enemy named Ichiro, but if you quickly kill one of them before they even transform, then this fight is easy peasy. They're actually pretty easy on their own. Thunder is their floral finisher. Round five is a little tougher. We got three Ice Doom Mirrors and three Wind Doom Mirrors. More elemental enemies that need either a certain brushstroke or just a little bit of time and patience before they're vulnerable. But I can't have that bullshit. Just use your exorcism slips and take them all off so you have a chance to know what hit them. <laughs> Thankfully, using the pools from the enemies themselves, we can exploit their weakness and make the fight go a little easier. Ice gets the fire, and wind gets the veil of mist. Fire melts ice. Mist uh, stops the wind. Like. Maybe fog that leads to the stagnation and immobility of the wind? And these mirrors can apparently get dizzy from their main source of transfer- Okay, whatever, next! Round six is an endurance round. While not unforgivingly punishing, it's more in the sheer number of enemies. Nine Halo Guardians and 14 Headless Guardians. That's 21 enemies! More than any Devil Gate, even in the third set. But thankfully, not all at once. With their increased defense and a bit of swarming from the multitude of dudes, this might take some time. Fortunately, all the enemies have the same floral finisher, the Cherry Bomb. Spam that along with Veil of Mist, thanks to the Infinity Stones you may or may not have at this point, and not only will it seriously damage nearby enemies, but it could trigger extra demon fangs if the blast happens to kill them. Alright, next! Round 7 is a fight with six Poltergeists. 
or 18 scythes that decided to form a power trio. Hey, jokes, am I right? Haha! <laughs> uh. These enemies are probably the toughest of the elemental enemies, at least which you'll be seeing in this particular double gate. They move unbelievably fast, react differently to different brushstrokes sometimes, and they can drain your health pretty damn fast as well. All I can say is, watch your health, keep an eye on all your enemies on screen, and attack like hell when they're vulnerable. Their floral finisher is the Galestrom, but used at the wrong time will just speed up the Poltergeist and screw you over even more. So be careful! Sheesh! Now we're getting to the really thick battles here. Three more to go. Round 8! Five! Blue Cyclops! This should have been a maddeningly difficult endurance round, but since we played over the second half of the game, instead of taking on these gates immediately when we found them, with enough offense, you can take them down pretty easily. It kinda works similar to how Great Tengus work, we'll be seeing some later, but they're more vulnerable and just don't have as high defense as they do. Deluge, which is a brushstroke we do not have, is his floral finisher. We just haven't picked it up yet, but we will! Alright, next! Round 9 are 12 Tube Foxes. Tube Foxes were what we fought in the sunken ship before we got the Fox Rods. They're Rouse Agents, or more accurately Ninetales Agents. And why they're here is a mystery, but they're here and they're after you, so whatever. You only fight a few enemies at a time, but the Foxes are fast and hit pretty hard. Using Veil of Mist in your hardest hitting weapon, I prefer the Glaive really, to make quick work of them. Well, as quick as quick can be at least. They like to jump all over the stage, so moving quickly with this is probably the best course of action. One nasty thing they still like to do, though, is drain your ink, so make sure you still have some Infinity Stones left over at this point. Otherwise, you're gonna be hurting for a bit. Their floral finisher is Slash, simple enough. So just use Veil of Mist, beat them a bit, and slash them to take your fangs. Alright, we got one more to go. Let's do this! Round 10 is against five blue ogres and five red ogres. Ugh, this is probably the hardest fight in this set of gates. Again, not through sheer difficulty since you have the hang of combat at this point, and you're also pretty overleveled, I guess, but through time itself. These are ten enemies that, in addition to their high defense, has a large face guard that deflects all attacks. Get them down to half health, and they'll give you an opportunity to slash the guard off their faces, making them totally vulnerable. But that's only if you get the opportunity. And that takes time, and there's always three ogres on screen, so things can get pretty hectic, especially with their high attack to top it off. They can shave off your health pretty quickly, too, especially if they all gang up on you, which is what they're programmed to do. Although, with enough healing items and using your brush strokes, eventually they'll fall. But you'll probably get a shit bonus. Who cares? Thunder is their finisher. You can use the Lightning Glaive to act as a pool, so you can use it whenever. And now with the tenth and final Devil Trial Gate vanquished, a new chest appears. And we've worked all this time just for Stray Bead 65. All that work for one little tiny bead. And the work's not done yet, because we still have a second pair. Or at least a second set of Devil Trial Gates in Kamui. Let's head over there right now. Alright, so now we're actually in Kamui now. The place that we need to head for the third Devil Trials Gate is up north, near the uh, entrance to Wepkir. And, oh, I'm gonna turn night. And uh, hey, look at that! It's another chest. Let's see if we can't pick that up real quick. There's just treasures littered all over the place. It's crazy. We got a crystal! That's something, I guess. Alright. Let's see, I think it's, uh, it's not here, it's back here. It's, it, it's like tucked away in some corner, it's a little tricky to actually get to. Cause you need to be actually going up the path to Webkir. You, know, you, you, you need to get on that frozen river pretty much, the cave is back there. Yeah, there we are. I think we've been here once before, too. There we have. Alright, so you just dig here. I initially thought you had to use a cherry bomb, but no, you just use Digging Champ to dig the hard dig spot. And when you dig there, you got a spider to deal with! Oh, yeah. You know, I completely forgot that these Devil Gate trial spots are indeed guarded by a spider boss. It's the same spider boss that we had in the pretty much the very first, uh, 
the very first dungeon in the Suited Ruins back in like episode 7. That was a long time ago, and we've seen these a couple times before already. But this one is the hardest iteration because usually it takes like two or three of these uh, vines to actually hit him. But here it takes five, and it's kind of hard to find enough vines to get them all the way, especially when he keeps moving and getting rid of all of my hard work. Come on! So maybe using Fail of Mist, I can maybe grab onto him, and uh, looks like it's not going to work in this situation. All right, I got one. All right, let's see if I can't get the rest of- Oh! Oh! Not so much for that. Man. See why he's definitely the hardest? He's always constantly moving and he takes the most amount of vines and it just takes the right. Damn. It just takes the right brush strokes. When we get him open, though, it should be pretty easy to take him out from there. Come on, come on. One more. I think. Come on. Let's see. That. Shit. That's Gale Storm. Shit. Hit right into the ink pot. That's did that do it. All right, so we'll hit fail of mist. Hurry. Yeah. And I got the glaive here, which is the strongest weapon I have right now. And I think if I use it just right, I should be able to take them all out before he closes back up again. Yeah. Just a little bit more. Yeah. Come on. Hit it. See, I'm also using the golden ink pot as well, which makes my ink refill a lot faster. That's a good thing. You, you can use that in place of an infinity stone. That's usually a good thing. All right, let's see if I can't get one more. Come on, come on. And did I get it? Oh hell yeah, I got it. All right. Huh. Well, thanks to that unnecessary distraction. They they get 30,000 yen, so I guess it wasn't really all that unnecessary. Kind of really unnecessary, but after all that, we get ourselves a chest, and now we can begin the Devil Gates proper. After we get a Sun Fragment. And well, we can't really begin them proper just quite yet. We need to leave and then come right back in. Why would you think to come back in here after you defeated a spider boss? Seems a little cryptic, don't you think? Well, anyway. Now, let's get this started proper. Let's go! Round one of the third Devil Trial Gate starts off as it intends to go on. Twelve Blade Namahages and five Umbrella Namahages. The most difficult iterations of enemies and a lot of them to boot. This series of Devil Trial Gates is no doubt the hardest of the three, which wouldn't make much sense otherwise. But with the proper preparations, you should be alright. Make sure you have plenty of health items with you, as well as Infinity Stones. Demon Fang items like the Golden Ink Pot will also help immensely if you're low on Infinity Stones. Like I am. Also, now would be a great time to use all those Steel Sakes and Vengeance Slips and all those other items you've accumulated throughout the game. This is about the hardest the game will ever get in terms of combat. And with all this on your side, as well as the techniques that you used in the previous Devil Gates, victory will surely come for you soon enough. Both the Namahage's floral finishers are Gale Storm. Floral finishers aren't as prevalent in this Devil Gate trial, because it's all about the intense, difficult combat you're faced with. Whew, well that covers that one. Now let's quickly shoot through the rest of these nine. Round two has nine more Blade Namahage's and three Igloo Turtles. I recommend focusing on the Igloo Turtles first, because they're an enemy that requires additional input. You need to use fire to expose their weak points, and only then will they take actual damage. The Blade Namahages will end up trying to distract you, but when you attack the Igloo Turtles to try and make them vulnerable, more often than not, they'll get caught in your attack as well. The Blades still take Gale Storm, and the Igloo Turtles take Firestorm for their finishers. Next round. Round 3 has 5 Bull Charms. It may not seem like much, but they work similarly to the Ogres in the earlier Devil Gates, in that they have high attack and crazy high defense, and they have a face guard. Luckily, they're much easier to hit, and their charging attacks are easy enough to predict. Firestorm is their floral finisher. And it's about this time I realize I'm having a hard time. In my Fast Track LP playthrough, I find that I'm woefully unprepared for this. More unprepared than I normally am when I play casually. 
If you're running low on health, all hope might not yet be lost. By now, your coin purse should be big enough to enable uses of the Demon Fang item, Wood Mat. For a relatively paltry sum, you can let Amaterasu rest on the Wood Mat, and her health will gradually restore for literal pocket change. Well, now that her health is back, let's continue on. Round 4 has a shit ton of enemies. It involves 14 clay samurai and 3 clay drummers. They have the highest defense compared to their imp counterparts, and can hurt quite a bit. Here I'd recommend using your strongest rosary. Even though it's not the true ultimate rosary that we have yet to obtain, hitting multiple enemies will still feel like a time saver. Well, for me at least. There's a lot of fucking dudes to handle here, you know? The Veil of Mist floral finishes these guys. Next wave. Fifth round has a lot of enemies yet again. Two clay drummers and eight clay shoguns. This is a step up in difficulty and where you really want to watch your health. But so many clay shoguns at once, they can really drain your health quickly, as their laser attack is pretty devastating. The unthinkable even happened, and I actually died! But thanks to my astral pouch, it revived me and does not count as a death. If this happens, be sure to eat a golden peach right away to fill up the astral pouch again. You have as many peaches as you have left and five free deaths before the platinum is out of your reach. This is a very dangerous fight. Taking out the shoguns should take precedence over the drummers. Again, watch your health and maybe try to use some of those reflecting strips and try to keep your godhood up as well. Veil of Mist works on both of them as well. Here's another tip. If you're really hurting on health, you can just use some of the praise you've accumulated and use it towards your health and you get a free full health restore! How about that? Alright, moving on. Round 6 is another clusterfuck of enemies. 12 more clay samurai and 5 dogu. Dogu having some of the highest defense stats in the entire game. Their attack is pretty high as well. Watch your health and they should fall with enough perseverance just like the rest of them. Veil of Mist takes out the clay samurai and the dogu falls to slash. Which gave out a crap ton of demon fangs. Oh, don't forget to piss on the enemies either! Round 7 is where we begin to take a turn. Only 5 enemies again. 5 great tangus. Ordinarily, this would have been a much longer fight, but I managed to get lucky. While they're in their, uh, flying form, they're vulnerable to damage. And when they revert to their swordsman form, they're almost invincible. So fortunately, none of the tangus were in this form for very long, and I made quick work of- Okay, okay, I emptied a whole shitload of exorcism slips into the tangus when they were in their flying forms. After the first two tangus, three more show up, and you can use slips to practically drain their entire health bar in half a minute. Good thing we did a shit ton of treasure hunting all this time. Blizzard takes out their floral finisher, but we don't have a source for it right now, so let's move on. Round 8 is where we hit the home stretch. A couple of familiar faces show up. Two evil rows and two wakas. I knew that Rao was a demon all along, but Waka? I never thought he'd be in the depths of a devil gate, of all things. Huh. Uh, well, this fight is considerably easier with the Rosary, again for multiple attacks on multiple enemies, and also if you learn to dodge at one of the dojins. Waka will launch forward with his sword at wherever your position is, and proper dodging is the best way to counter this attack. Rao just throws crap at you to throw you off, and dodging works for her too. Shockingly, neither of them have a floral finisher. Round 9 is... Literally the same thing as round 8, except there's three evil rounds this time. Certainly hairier, but not too different. It's literally the same thing. No need to show it. I mean, you saw round 8, didn't you? You've seen round 9. So I guess we can move on to... Round 10! The final round of the Devil Trial Gates. And instead of Orochi or Ninetales or some other evil entity, it's just three Nagis. Remember when we went back a hundred years in the past and had to fight off Nagi? Well, now there's three of them! Nagi's certainly no pushover, but by now, after the previous two rounds, you're probably in the zone and already prepared for him. He works kind of like Waka and Rao combined, launching towards you and throwing shit at you. It's a mess. But any health items you have left, you be sure to use. Anything that you can use on your side, now would be a time to throw whatever you have left at Nagi. He also has no floral finisher. With enough perseverance, he should go down. And that should be the end. After all that... After all of that, we get one chest. And one other thing. We get a trophy! Out of the gate swinging! So, Stray Beats 79, and a trophy for getting all three Devil Gates. Sheesh. But look at how much money we have now. We now have almost two and a half million yen. Next time on Let's Play Okami HD, we're gonna spend some of that shit and make even more money. See you next time.